out, and then I'm going to come back and beat you up. That's basically what he's making a career out of. He's starting to clean up his boxing a little bit as well, and actually get a little technical, which is which is nice. Um, so I actually thought Derek Lewis would win this. Round one, we got Nagano Stocks, but doesn't throw a strike for three and a half minutes. Three and a half minutes. Now Anderson Silva takes exactly one minute off, but three and a half minutes off. Whew, Lewis lands a right body kick and straight right and close to a flying switch kick, which is nice. Very fast flying switch kick for a big old heavyweight or double kick, whatever you want to call it. 10-9 Derek Lewis. Round two, both guys do nothing. Nothing for four minutes until a warning from ref Herb Dean, and then they do a little bit more than nothing for the last minute. Lewis does always try more, but whoo, snooze fest. Um, it was it was pretty bad. I mean, Lewis tries, but he was hanging back and walking back and scared into Gano's power and kind of thought he'd do a uh, counter punching thing. Maybe it would lead to takedowns. <sighs> okay, round three. More almost absolutely nothing, but at least Lewis tries a bit. That's how excited I am about this fight, telling you guys about it. Don't bother watching it. Nothing happened. Nakano does land a few up jabs, and all his hope seemed to be in two left high kicks that he tried from softball. He was doing that in the first round. I'm going to go to softball. And they're like, well, maybe he's going to throw a left high kick, but he never did in the first round. Well, now he throws two. Um, and he did try, which would work out well for him, a power shift out shift left hook which you can go power shift out power shift out uppercut Ooh, i've been preaching that for years going back to like 11 12 you can see my videos on power hooks power shift hooks um uh, talking about that stuff before you know alpha male got famous for getting all their knockouts when Dwayne ludwig first there look at all their knockouts most of them were from that power shift hook anyway I digress because that's more exciting than this damn fight. It sucked. Everyone hated it, and I'm sure both are getting flack uh, for it. Um, Lewis has not forgotten. Nagano needs to... I don't know what he needs to do. He was overhyped, and now he just crumbled uh, mentally after getting controlled for Stipe. Like, oh, God, if I don't get wrestled for five rounds, then I'm going to win. No, you actually have to strike. You can't just stand on your feet. Standing on your feet doesn't just automatically win you a fight. So, in the main event, Steve Bay, heavyweight champ versus Daniel Cormier, light heavyweight champ. Now, DC did weigh in a bit heavier than the heavyweight champ. He weighed in at 246. Uh, Steve Bay weighed in at 242.5. Now, I would have recommended uh, DC at 238 as the target weight between 236 and 238, probably 238. I would tell DC 236 coming at 238. I thought this was a bit too heavy for DC, and I'm still going to say, I still think it was too heavy for DC. It was horribly off balance in the first two, round, uh, two minutes of this fight. Uh, and some of that's psychological as well, but when you got a little extra weight, when you're scared of a punch, throwing you to the other side. I mean, I'm DC shaped. I'm DC Fedor shaped guy, just shy of 5'11". I'm fat right now at 230. I'm ripped at 218, 219, like ripped for me anyway. Um, so, you know, I can kind of speak from experience with this. Okay, I was actually leaning toward DC to win this. This is true. This is everything I, I actually wrote that, this down before I watched the fight. I'm taking no, notes of my crappy shorthand uh, as I went along. Picking DC to win and may, um, to win against Stipe and then make millions by beating Brock Lesnar and then re retiring in manifest destiny, laws of attraction for a guy who his whole life has put up with being so gosh darn good. But I... And obviously number two over all the rest except for number one. Both in wrestling. Was it Kale Sanderson? Might, got them, might have that wrong. Now. Both in wrestling was <laughs> against the best dang wrestler. And in MMA against John Jones. It was so obviously number two. It was so obviously better than everybody else. Um, I thought that he would beat Stipe and then move on to fight Brock. Make millions of dollars. Retire happy. And kind of have all that behind him. So here's what happened. Round number one, Stipe starts landing with much better punches and cage control. He, he's got DC pinned against the cage. Uh, DC's off balance and kind of scared looking. You know, or you, I mean, he feels Kane's punches, but you know, a fight is different than training. It is, it especially got all those eyeballs on you. Um... In the exchange in the last minute, and now all of a sudden DC's hand speed starts coming to play. In the beginning, DC kept looking for the left collar. Ty did land one uh, big right uppercut, I might add. 
Um, DC's hand speed is better. He lands a couple jab right long hook combinations, kind of like left long hook, right long hook, Fedor style, like Fedor knocked out, down Tim Sylvia with. So you kind of see in that Fedor comparison everyone made uh, DC um, into earlier. Um, lands this jab long hook, jab long hook, grabs a collar tie, switches it into the underhook. He steps back, counter turns, and Stipe is actually doing the same thing with his energy in the reverse. Bang! Right hook, knock down, left, right, left, right, karate punches standing over him, blast Stipe out of there, and oh my god, DC is now the two-time champ champ. The only second time two-time champ champ, late heavyweight and heavyweight champion by knockout in the first round. So, congrats, DC. And what, lo and behold, we call out Brock Lesnar, like I called two and a half weeks ago in my weight cutting video. I said, what, oh my God, what, what if DC beats Stipe and then Brock Lesnar? What, are we, what does that say about DC? And then what does it say about John Jones? Look at it. I'm not lying, I'm not making this up. It was published two and a half weeks ago. Um, calls Brock in the cage, WWE antics, of course. Amazing at 39 years old. And um, that underhook spin to hook KO was very reminiscent of Dan Henderson versus Shogun. And uh, if you look at my elbow crank videos, talking about that and then showing how to do the same thing for the elbow crank or the forearm breaker, uh, which a couple people have used. Just no one's paying attention to it yet. Look, so for the people that have used it. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this breakdown. That was pretty long, um, but I thought you'd like some details on 226. Congrats, DC. You are now also a champ champ, not just McGregor. So uh, you can call your shots, and the shots may be coming to you. If that Brock Lesnar fight happens, pay-per-view points, baby. I think you're going to beat Brock, and I think you're going to be set for life. I mean, he could get stopped by Brock on the ground. He's good with the underhooks and escaping from side mount and stuff, though. They have a good jiu-jitsu coach. He's not... He's not a turtle on his back anymore. Um, so even if he does end up there, but I don't think so. If you look at Randy, Randy could out underhook, out pummel Brock and put him against the cage. And Randy's was smaller, I think 225 in that fight, 226. Um, if Randy can out pummel Brock and, and, and put him against the cage and stuff, even though he lost that fight, these are things that DC's going to look at and DC's going to be able to do. Guys, I will uh, hopefully do a breakdown um, on the PFL and the amazing... Other than DC, what you really need to pay attention to is that main event, the, the finale of Tough. People are probably not hyping it as much as it should be, and they're going to forget about it. You shouldn't. There's your next superstar. There's your next superstar. Watch that video. I'll tell you all about it. Thank you for checking in, and I will catch you on the flip side.